All right. Uh, well, I'm very happy to be here, and that's my second time uh, in uh, Sun River. Um, I'm extremely grateful to the NSF and Blue Waters in particular for enabling my research. Uh, it definitely take it to another level. Hopefully, you'll see uh, what kind of science we can do with it. All right. I was reminded yesterday that a very important part of my presentation is the next slide. I. I use Blue Water too. Who can guess? <laughs> Run all atom molecular dynamic simulations. That would be a wrong answer. No. What we do, we are using computers to understand the molecular underpinnings of life and <coughs> build biologically expired systems. So, uh, coming from a physics department, I tend to think of life as a collection of formulas and, and so what. And, uh, well, the formula that comes to mind is, is, a, is a sequence of the DNA. The DNA is a long molecule that programs uh, everything that is going on or will go on, go on in a living ar organism. And, um, uh, and uh, my research basically is built on, on, on this molecule. Uh, so one particular topic that I will be talking about today is, uh, is the DNA inside viral genomes. So I guess everyone is familiar with what viruses are. Uh, they look a little bit scary in this black and white pictures. Um, so what you're looking at is, um, uh, is an image of a herpes virus. Um, it's actually not a very benign one. Uh, it's one of the leading causes of death for people who have a uh, compromised immune system. I would love to have a laser pointer. Um, thank you. Uh, here it is. Yeah, and uh, one particular thing about viruses is uh, that it contains uh, its program, the DNA, inside the capsids. Um, so you can think about viral genome, the genome being the collection of, of uh, letters of genetic alphabet in the nucleic acid packed inside the viruses as a kind of a program. So it is a program for infection. So great strides have been made in uh, elucidating experimental as a structure of DNA inside viruses. So here's a cryom microscopy picture from Alex Yevlevich from University of Illinois, which reveals this uh, very uh, uh, ordered structure of DNA inside. Uh, but that is somewhat surprising because uh, most of you probably know that the DNA is a very charged polymer, one of the most uh, charged polymers known to us, and yet somehow it manages to fit inside of the capsid. So the questions are, you know, what is the actual structure of the genome? Because this is an average picture. It's not actu the actual presentation of how it's arranged in the, in the, in the nucleus. Uh, how, what role does the structure play in ejection of the genome outside, out of the virus and facilitating infection? And can we use the structure of the genome for, uh, for a kind of a drug target. So we actually don't know what it is. So once we know what it is, maybe we can use it to prevent and treat infections. All right, so brief uh, physics uh, uh, digression. Same charges, of course, repel, and DNA is uh, a highly charged molecule, so it should not be able to pack inside the viruses, but if you place it in the environment that contains other things, uh, the, attractive in, uh, the repulsive interactions can turn into attraction and DNA lives in solutions. It's surrounded by ions, and it's been experimentally known that depending on the type of the ions, you can have either attractive or repelling interactions. So we were curious to use uh, Blue Waters to study the system computationally, and here's how we do. So we build uh, an all-atom representation of the experimental system. So in this case, you're looking at one DNA molecule, but of course with Blue Waters we can do a lot more than one. Here's 64. And we can add uh, everything that is an experiment. We add uh, those uh, polycations. We add uh, monovalent ions. We add water. And then we surround everything with a confining potential so that we can measure the force that the DNA applies to the confining potential. And thereby, we can determine the internal pressure in the DNA array. So then, uh, usually, simulations are done under periodic boundary conditions. Here's the classical molecular force field that has been developed and calibrated over the years to reproduce properties of biological systems. All right, so this project actually spans multiple years. And uh, so the first attempt was actually done in 2012. And here is the result. So what you're looking at are those 
uh, you know, disks are the DNA molecules, and the background color is a uh, concentration of ions. And you can see that the DNA starts to cluster, and where it forms contact, there's lots of, of this color. I don't know what it is, uh, yellow maybe. And uh, that means that there is a very high ion concentration there. Uh, so because we can measure pressure directly, we can plot pressure versus distance between DNA molecules. And, uh, and basically what we found was that we are actually nowhere near experiment. So here's experimental study. This is a gold standard in the field, Rao Porcijan. And this is where we are, depending on what choice of force field. We can use amber or we can use charm. But either way, we are like orders of magnitude off, OK? So. Yeah, and we try different ions, and we still order some magnitude off, and that was kind of a sad uh, moment. Uh, and we decided, well, what can we do? Maybe we should abandon the project and do something else, or maybe we can fix the, the force field. And that's what uh, we decided to do. We fix the force field. And the way we did it, uh, we uh, introduced custom surgical corrections to specific uh, atomic pairs. And uh, we designed a simulation system that mimics osmotic pressure experiments. Uh, so we can match precisely calibration of our model to what is measured in experiment. And once we do that, we will find that suddenly all this clustering of ions disappears, and we get very nice uh, uh, dispersed system. And we have done it for many, many uh, types of uh, molecular interactions, which now is summarized in the so-called QFIX, which stands for CUFIX, Champagne-Urbana fix for. Uh, molecular dynamics uh, force fields, uh, which covers uh, pretty much every charge charge pair in the, in the biomolecules. So now, equipped with this refined force field, we can revisit the program, the, 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 the process, and here's what we found. So basically, for all uh, ionic environments and DNA density uh, packing, we were able to match experiment precisely. And just important thing to note, we actually didn't use this experiment for calibration. We used other experiments for calibration. This is really validation, and it's right on. Well, great. So we have a LATAM model now that can probe uh, the physics of DNA inside viruses. Uh, what can we do next? Well, we have to get the DNA somehow in. And in biology, DNA is, uh, for this particular type of viruses that are called pressurized viruses, the DNA is actually packaged by a molecular motor. And here's a really beautiful uh, movie from Carlos Bustamante's lab that shows how it happens. Uh, so we kind of know in molecular details the process. Uh, but uh, packaging a DNA takes a couple of minutes, right? And with molecular dynamic simulations, if you're lucky, you can do maybe 10 microseconds using conventional supercomputers. So, so there is a problem. Yeah, we also know um, the pressure inside the capsid. We know the forces that the motor applies. So one uh, trick, standard trick in the field is, well, why don't we push it with a harder force? You know, we just push it harder and see what happens. The problem is if you push hard, the DNA will break, and it's not going to work. So we had to rethink our strategy, and this is how we arrived with, with the following. So we said, well, OK, well, why don't we just uh, then um, trade uh, speed for uh, precision and uh, basically develop a multi-resolution way of modeling DNA systems, just like that. So here's how it's done. You're looking at, uh, uh, at the same piece of DNA, well, not the same piece of DNA, but a uh, similar piece of DNA modeled at uh, different resolutions, starting from 24 base pair per, per two beats, going to all the way to the all atom. And all of that has the same physical properties, has the same persistent lens and, um, and everything else. So here's how we parameterize our model. Uh, it's a simple cosrain model with beads on a string. So we have a bond potential, which we calibrated against uh, DNA extension measurements, which gave us a lexical con constant. Uh, we also have an angle potential. And uh, here, the angle potential was calibrated to reproduce the persistent lens of DNA. We worry about twist in the DNA, because one of the questions is, is DNA twisted when it's being packaged? So we also introduce this uh, uh, orientation beads to enable dihedral potentials. And our model captures a twist persistent length. So finally, we uh, put a lot of effort to calibrate our DNA-DNA interactions at our multi-resolution level. 
And what you're looking at here is, uh, again, the data from Raul Parsegian lab, which is the pressure versus distance between DNA. And this is experimental data, and this is our now multi-resolution model at different resolutions. So you see that changing the resolution doesn't affect the, um, uh, the pressure, meaning that we have a model that is physically uh, valid. One last thing uh, here is uh, we're also worried about strand crossing. You know, this is something that happens frequently in coarse grain model. So we kind of made sure that the DNA strands do not, cannot pass through one another when we pull on them. Uh, a little bit of a technical detail how we switch resolution. So we basically map uh, the position of the, of the beads to a 3D spline and then interpolate. And we do the same in, uh, uh, in angular space. All right, so now that we have this multi-resolution model of DNA and the all-atom model of, 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 the, of the ions uh, calibrated to reproduce experiments, we can finally attempt to our main goal is to see, uh, to resolve the structure of DNA inside viral capsid. So what we did here is we took the cryo-EM density of uh, HK, uh, HK97 pores, uh, HK97 uh, capsid, and we added a portal protein there. And, uh, and then we packaged it. So here's uh, the highlight of the presentation. Uh, this is how it goes. So we used uh, um, a physiological force here applied in the portal to package DNA in at uh, four base pairs uh, per bit uh, resolution. So once that is done, we then refine our structure going to two base pairs per bit, eventually to one base pairs per bit. And, uh, and then arrive with a fully atomistic model of the capsid. Well, great. So is this model any good? Uh, so here's some evidences showing that it is a fantastic model. So look, uh, this, uh, as we package the DNA in at the coarse grain level, what we can do, we can measure again the pressure in this partially filled capsid. Uh, and here it is. So it starts at zero and then it rises to about 13 bars. So then we equilibrate the system at different resolutions. And you see, we change the resolution, the, the pressure stays the same. This is kind of really important because it shows that our model is um, physically sound. And then, so this part actually took a lot of time going from a coarse grain to all atom. Because in fact, you know, the DNA is a very frustrated system. We had to match it precisely. This is really precise fitting and calibration. Um, and how do we know that it worked? Well, because the pressure after uh, we simulated in full all atom details basically is, is the same as in uh, an experiment and also as in a coarse grain model. So we can actually measure, we can actually directly compare the, the pressure to, um, to experimental data. So here the, the symbols are the data from uh, Alex Yevlevich lab. And this is the theoretical curve, and this one is ours, and it's right on. All right, we can also uh, see how well our model agrees with what we know about the structure from experiment. So again, so on the right side here is a, is a result of cryo reconstruction. So what you're looking at, so this is the outer shell of the, of the caps, but then there's these layers, right? But those layers are there because the image was averaged over, like, over thousands of particles, you know? You actually cannot have a continuous DNA molecule going through this if it's only layers. And we can do the same kind of uh, averaging from our simulation. So, so far we've resolved uh, 15 different instances of the capsid, and that's kind of what we have. So you can see that, that our kind of our resolution actually matches pretty well what happens on the outside. On the inside, uh, well, I guess we have to average over more configurations. I'm pretty sure it will work. Why, why, do we, why are we so confident in it? Because there's another method that probes the structure, so to say, all at once. It's called a small angle X-ray scattering. So here are the scattering curves that were determined by experiments, the blue lines here, and like simulation. You can see it's, it's pretty much right on. There is a little bit of discrepancy here at the, at the top, but that really uh, is, uh, is um, due to the way the experimental methods are uh, dealing with, uh, with the background. All right, so, um, so uh, I can conclude here by saying that uh, using Blue Waters, we have obtained the first all-atom structure of the entire viral capsid. So there have been many structures of the outer shell of the capsid. There have been many fantastic simulations of 
virus particles. They all did not have the genome inside. This is the first one that has a genome inside. And uh, our structure matches everything that we know about uh, that particular virus. Um, an exciting possibility is to use now the structure to look for some possible drug targets. Uh, another byproduct of this uh, effort was the uh, development of this multi-resolution method to simulate uh, DNA, DNA, DNA protein interactions, which, will, which I'm sure will find many applications beyond the field of virology. And uh, our next step is to extend this model to biologically interesting single-stranded DNA and single-stranded RNA viruses, which are, of course, a lot more difficult to, to deal with because of the secondary structure that develops in, in such molecules, but uh, I'm confident we'll uh, uh, make it happen as well. All right, so let me stop here and, of course, acknowledge uh, Blue Waters. Uh, this work would not have been possible without it, period. And, of course, the people who did the work, so Ji Jung Yu, uh, he did the parameterization of the all atom force field, so he is now faculty in Korea. So, Chris Matthew developed the multi resolution. Uh, DNA model, which is called mrDNA, and everyone calls it Mr. DNA, so he's Mr. DNA. And uh, Kush is uh, this brave second year student who did all this uh, viral packaging simulations. Uh, big applause to him to, for pulling it through, and David helped us with uh, analyzing the data. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>